Thanks for joining. We're going to get started. Um, this is announcing the Beeswax Bid Modifier webinar, uh, rounding out a full spectrum of programmatic optimization options. I'm here with Shamim, our Chief Product Officer, and he will be giving a uh, brief overview of what the Bid Modifier is, going to, into both basic and advanced use cases, and also showing a demo of the product itself. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. We will be recording the webinar, and the recording of the webinar will be sent out within 24 hours. And one last thing, there will be a Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. Please feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar, and we will address those questions at the end or follow up with you individually. Great, so uh, again, my name is Shamim Samadi, Chief of Product, Co-Founder, and uh, yeah, really excited to go through um, our, our recent launch of, of bid modifiers. Um, the product is now open uh, for customers to use. We'll talk about activation, um, but let me go through sort of a quick, quick agenda. So I'll talk through sort of the motivation behind why we built the feature. Um, we'll go through some basics. Um, there's four different ways where you can apply bid modifiers. We'll go through each of those. Uh, then we'll talk through some advanced applications, reporting, roadmap, and lastly, how you can activate it uh, on your account and get, get started using it um, as soon as today. So, um, so talking through the motivation and the background a little bit. So as, as Julia mentioned, sort of bid modifiers really rounds out our full spectrum of optimization options. So if you think about our optimization options on this sort of access of flexibility, um, we have, first we have what we call hex bid, which is our out of the box optimization. So this is stuff like our CPC optimization, our CPM with pacing. Uh, so with this optimization, there isn't a ton of flexibility. It's more you set it and forget it. Um, and that's sort of on one side of the spectrum. Uh, on the other side of, our, of the spectrum is what we call our bidding agent, which is really bring your own algorithm. Uh, very unique uh, sort of feature in its flexibility. You can write your bidding agent in any language, have full control over every single impression, uh, and we really give sort of unprecedented control uh, relative to other platforms with our bidding agent. And today we're going through bid modifiers, which is you know not as flexible as a bidding agent, but still quite flexible um, and lets you control uh, quite a bit of your bidding strategies, and, and that's what we'll go through today. And as you sort of think about this, um, you know, we think users and our customers will both uh, find bid modifiers sufficient to um, achieve their optimization goals. Others may find it as something they use to, uh, to test their optimization before they end up building a bidding agent. And so uh, really, really sort of you should think about this full spectrum and how you can, you know, use this spectrum on some campaigns and how you can move up the sort of spectrum to do more flexible things with our bidding agent uh, over time. Uh, and, and going through sort of the, uh, a bit more background. So if you think about um, a line item in our system, really it's sort of a set of these sort of constraints. Uh, you have dates and budget, targeting, frequency cap, creatives. And with the line item, you're saying, I want to bid on anything that matches this set, right? But within that set, which could be very large, you may value impressions within that set very differently, right? Um, so just as a very simple example to illustrate the point, a better performing, larger creative, uh, you may want to bid higher than a lower performing, uh, smaller creative, you may, may want to bid lower, right? That's just a very simple example, um, but to illustrate that uh, really one of the things you should work through is which impressions do you value more than others and how, can, how do you want to modify your bid prices uh, relative to that value. And, and one more sort of thing before we go into the, the product, uh, you know, one of the principles we believe at Beeswax is that really um, access to data, both raw and aggregated, is a prerequisite for building powerful optimization. So you, you can't do one without the other, right? Uh, optimizing without access to both raw data to understand deeply 
how the marketplace is, is performing and aggregated data so that you can make sort of quick decisions. Without that, uh, you really can't build powerful optimization. And, th and that's one of the things that really differentiates us from other platforms is the unparalleled access to raw data. So just going through the funnel of data, you know, uh, if you think about the funnel from auctions, bids, and wins, let's start with wins. Wins is just a tiny fraction of the overall market, right? It's like, call it a one in, ten, uh, you know, 10,000th percent of the market. So you need win data to understand, okay, what price am I clearing at? How often are you winning? That's very important, but that's just one part of the data set. With bids, um, without bids, you won't be able to answer any of these questions, but you have questions like, what percent of the time are you actually winning? So of my bids, how often am I winning? Uh, how does my win percentage change as I change my bid price? So as I increase my bid price, how does my win rate change? You know, am I all of a sudden bidding above different floors on specific publishers and apps? Um, and without that sort of bid data, you can't answer that question. How, how, do, how do my lost auctions differ from my one auctions, right? So looking closely, okay, I'm like bidding the same on certain auctions, but I'm losing in different places. Like why is that happening? Without access to the raw data to figure out if it's the publisher or a valuable user ID or whatnot, you won't be able to answer any of these questions. And lastly, sorry, with auctions, you know, answering questions like how often are your high value auctions even available in the marketplace? What, where are they? Are they, are they sort of concentrated in certain geos on certain apps and domains on certain exchanges? Um, how are they distributed over time? Like how often do you see these auctions so that you can figure out your bidding strategies? You may want to um, bid differently if they're very rare versus if they occur uh, very often over time, right? So, um, so data plus optimization is, is really sort of uh, uh, a prerequisite, I think. So now, now going through uh, the basics of the feature that we're talking about. So um, a bid modifier basically will allow you to do very sophisticated optimization strategies without necessarily having a bidding agent, without building tons of different line items to control your, uh, your bid prices and through an intuitive user interface and data model. So just some, some simple examples. Um, operating systems. You may see that there's different clearing prices and, and you may value different operating systems more than others. So just as, as an example, you may value iOS more than Android. So you may want to double your bids on iOS and reduce your, your bids on Android, right? Simple use case. Uh, second use case is high value users. You know, uh, so your homepage visitors, you may want to bid uh, more aggressively. Your shopping cart abandoners even more aggressively than that. Um, we'll go through some, some more advanced use cases uh, with, with users uh, later in the presentation. High value apps and domains. Um, another common example. Uh, within the set of apps you may, may want to buy, there are certain apps that perform really, really great. You may want to bid more aggressively because you value those impressions more. So uh, going through some of the uh, some more basics so that you can sort of understand the feature. So the bid modifier itself is a new object in our system uh, and it can be associated to any line item. It could also be associated at the campaign level and I'll talk about that. And the bid modifier, it expresses two things. So it's saying when to modify my bid prices and by what factor to modify my bid prices. So there's two, two components to it. It's applied after targeting. So this is a really important uh, point. So um, after targeting, within your targeting set, then you want to apply modifiers uh, within that set. It does not actually uh, affect targeting in any way. Uh, bid modifiers can be used both to increase or de decrease bid prices. So you can go in either direction. And then uh, lastly, when multiple modifier terms match. So we call a modifier term, uh, you know, it, you know, I, it, the uh, operating system is, is iOS would be a modifier term. So when multiple terms match, uh, the modifiers get multiplied together. So this is uh, a really powerful feature of bid modifiers where you could build linear, linear models uh, by having multiple matching terms. And I'll go through uh, an example of that later. 
So just uh, just to illustrate that in the in the sort of old model, um, when you have a single line item and a bundle of targeting, you have to always bid you know one dollar. Um, so you have a sort of uh, fixed bid price. With bid modifiers, what changes now is you still have your targeting. Your bid turns into a base bid. So use this bid price when a bid modifier does not match. And then you have your bid modifier itself, which has the modifying terms. So in this case, we have two terms with different factors. And when the auction in this case is iOS, we double the bid. And when the auction is Android, we reduce the bid um, as, as such. So let me go through now. There's, there's different ways to apply uh, bid modifiers, there's, and there's four ways. So the first is uh, what we call an include bid modifier. So this is uh, on any sort of standard targeting key, uh, you can apply bid modifier. So this, this can be your uh, you know, geos and, and operating systems, et cetera, but it also can be applied to an entire custom list. So an app list or a domain list or any of the other custom lists or an entire segment. Uh, th those, are both, uh, those are both part of our include bid modifiers. The second use case is a user level bid modifier. So this is different than segment because you're doing it on the individual user within the segment, right? So within my segment of you know, um, homepage visitors, there may be some users that are more valuable than others. So with user level bid modifiers, you can set a modifier on every user segment combination. Uh, we think this is really, really powerful uh, and will allow uh, a real granular bid modification. Uh, the third is through uh, Boolean expressions. So uh, just like in targeting, where you can write an arbitrary Boolean expression uh, for segments, you could do the same thing with bid modifiers. So you can have um, an arbitrary Boolean expression of and, ors, and nots with segments and apply a modifier on that uh, entire expression. So user is in segment A and in segment B, but not in segment C. On that combination, you can apply a bid modifier of say three. And, uh, and lastly, a uh, custom list item bid modifier. So this is not on the entire list of, of apps or domains, but on every individual app or domain in that list, you can have a different bid modifier. Um, so this is a feature that's coming soon. We're actually just a couple weeks away from releasing this um, and we'll make an announcement once, uh, once this feature uh, is available. So let me go through some examples. We've already gone through some, but uh, I'll fly through this and, and get to the demo in a second. But um, so some, some obvious sort of use cases, right? So we talked about ad size, different ad sizes have different clearing prices. Um, but what about inventory source? So as you probably know, the same apps and domains will clear uh, at different prices and you may value them differently on different exchanges. So just as an example, you know, they may clear higher on Annex than on Rubicon. And so you can increase your bids on Annex and reduce them on Rubicon. Um, we've talked about custom lists. L let me go to day parting. So with day parting, um, instead of, uh, you know, uh, blocking certain hours of the day, you can still do that, but you may instead say, actually 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, is, those are the key business hours. Uh, bid prices and clearing prices are more competitive. During those hours and those hours only, I wanna increase my, my bid price, right? I need to be more competitive during those hours. Uh, conversely, you could do the same thing for less valuable hours, right? Early hours in the morning, instead of blocking those out, you may just really reduce your bid prices and still be able to win uh, valuable impressions at a, at a lower price. Uh, one more example is ads.txt. So, you know, for direct sellers or, or resellers, those that are verified, you may want to be more competitive uh, and bid higher uh, uh, for those, uh, those auctions. Uh, so let me talk about how to create the bid modifier and then I'll jump to a demo. So there's, there's two ways uh, you can, you can create a bid modifier. Uh, separately as its own object and then associate it to your line items. And so you could, you know, so associate the same bid modifier to multiple line items. Um, and, and that is one way of doing it. The second is you can create the bid modifier directly within the line item workflow. 
Um, so that, that's what I'm showing here. So within the line item workflow, there's a new bid modifier tab where I can choose an existing bid modifier that I've already built or create a new one here. I can specify my bid modifier terms in a module that looks very similar to our targeting module. And then once I select a modifier term, I specify the factor uh, on the right hand side. So I'm now gonna jump into uh, a live demo to show you that. So I'm, I'm in our uh, 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 test account here. Um, so, uh, you know, two, two ways of creating the bid modifier. You can, you can create it in the, in the sort of the new button uh, and you have your own workflow for creating the bid modifier here. What I'm gonna show is how you do it directly in the line item workflow. So I have my line item and you'll notice now there's a new bid modifier tab. So nothing changes on the overview tab. You set your you know, budget, uh, your dates, your bidding strategy and your default CPM, what we call sort of our base bid now because there's a bid modifier. Uh, as normal, you go to targeting and, and targeting doesn't change at all. So in this case, just a very simple example I've targeted you know, New York and California, and I have my mobile app whitelist. So this is my whitelist, I'm interested. Anything outside of my, my whitelist, I don't wanna buy, so I've targeted that, right? Uh, and now I go to the new tab, uh, the bid modifier tab, and I have two options. I can either associate a bid modifier I've already built, uh, and if I do that, I could just you know, move on, or I could create a new one here. So why don't I create a new one? So the first thing that you do is you set a max bid price. Because as I mentioned, when you have multiple matching terms, uh, we multiply the, the, the factors together. So you wanna have some cap, right? I may, I may never wanna bid more than $20 on auction. So I could set that as a control here. I give my uh, bid modifier a name. And then I go through uh, a workflow that feels similar to targeting, um, because it has all those available options, but it's, uh, it's uh, specifying bid modifiers instead. So let me just go through the example that we, we went through, which is different ad sizes, right? So a 320 by 50 versus a 320 by 480 are gonna have very different clearing prices. You may want to bid lower um, for a 320 by 50 and bid really aggressively on a 320 by 480 interstitial mobile unit, right? So instead of breaking out two line items with different budgets and frequency caps and all that, do it all within a single line item and control your bids on those creative sizes. Um, I'll go through a couple more examples. So uh, just going through geo, right? Uh, really the thing you should take away is that anything that you can target on, you can modify on. But in this case, you know, I've targeted within my targeting set of New York and California, you may find that New York actually queers is, is a more competitive, more valuable region for you. So when users are in New York, you may want to bid 1.5 times your base bid. Um, inventory. So we talked about inventory sources. You know, Google Addicts might be clearing at a higher price, so I may increase my bids there. Um, and let me go into mobile apps. So uh, going through the, the custom list feature. So uh, with this initial launch, you can spe specify a modifier on the entire list. So I, I've already targeted my whitelist. You know, those are apps I want to buy. But within that list, there may be very high valuable mobile apps. So within the, my whitelist, things I want to bid more competitively for. So for those apps, I may want to, uh, uh, you know, multiply my bid by two. Uh, and lastly, let me just go through day part in that example. So let's just say Monday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. is my most competitive time. I may want to, on that time range, apply a, a modifier of 1.2, whatever it may be. So it's really up to you. It's incredibly flexible in terms of um, your ability to apply bid modifiers and anything that's uh, targetable. Um, you can have up to 1,000 modifier terms. Um, and uh, so that's sort of the, the standard use case, which we call uh, an include bid modifier. So now jumping back to the presentation, I wanna go through the second, um, the second type of, of bid modifier, which is the user level bid modifier. 
So, um, so uh, the, the way that this works is there's a value field in our uh, sort of user segment workflow, which hasn't been used today. Now we're going to be using it as the way to specify your, your modifying factor. So the value field can be set in three different ways. When you create segments, you're either uploading large files, you're, you're building those segments via segment tags, or you can use our custom augmenter. So going through them one at a time, for segment uploads, for every user to segment combination, you can optionally provide a value, right? When, when you pr provide that value, we will use that as the factor uh, for bid modification. And I'll, I'll talk through this one more step for enabling it, but this is where the value comes from. If you're building it from segment tags on, on your site, um, you could pass in the value in the tag itself, right? Um, so that's the second way. And the third way, so for some of our customers who, are, who have a custom augmenter, in the augmenter response, there's a value field. Um, so starting with this feature, that value field can be used um, as the factor for every user segment combination. So those are the three ways. Now, now talking through how you can differentiate between um, a user level modifier and a segment level. So for user level, we have this, um, this sort of flag that you can set where you change the segment to uh, dynamic. Uh, when you change it to dynamic, it will use the value field that you specified in the previous slide as the bid factor. If a user within that segment does not have a value, the default bid, bid factor will be used. So in this case, um, and I'll demo this in a second, I've set this segment to dynamic. This means if I have a value that I've provided via one of those three mechanisms, then use that as the bid factor, right? So for user one, you may have passed a value of 1.3, user two, uh, a factor of 2.1. We'll use that um, as the bid factor. Let's just say I don't have it illustrated here, but let's say user three did not have a value. In that case, you would use the default, which I'll show you, you can set in the line. Um, and for segment level, so this is not, um, this is if you want to specify this, the, the same modifier on the entire segment, you basically just do not set your uh, segment to dynamic. You set it to no, and in this case, it'll always use the same factor, right? So let's say you've set the factor to two, it'll always use two for any user in that segment. Um, so just showing that real quick, um, popping back to the demo. So I have my segments here, and I've categorized them into engagers and purchasers. So Let's say for you know, my seven day engagers, if I set it to no, uh, then this bit factor of two will be applied to uh, every user in that segment. If I set it dynamic to yes, it will use the value field that I passed in as, as the factor. And if a user is not, does not have a value, it will use the default of two. So that's how to sort of think about that. All right, um, so the third way is what we call a Boolean bid modifier, which can be applied on segments. So um, the same way you could set an arbitrary Boolean expression in targeting, you could do the same thing uh, with a bid modifier. So I could, write a, uh, I could write this arbitrary expression when segment uh, is canary one and segment is canary two, I may want to be very aggressive and 10x my bid price. So this sort of arbitrary Boolean expression um, can be used on segments only, um, but given how sort of flexible segments are in our platform, uh, we think this will give you a lot of flexibility in, uh, in writing complex Boolean expressions. And the fourth way, of course, which I'm, I won't go over is custom list items, which uh, again, we'll be releasing in a couple of weeks and we'll send a release note around that. So now some, some call them sort of advanced applications of bid modifiers, a few other things. So campaign level bid modifier. So, you know, the workflow we went through is at the line item level, but optionally you can associate a bid modifier at the campaign level. Uh, and when you do that, it'll, uh, uh, it'll apply to all line items beneath the campaign. Um, so the way that works 
Uh, but of course, any line item bid modifier will override the campaign level. So just sort of illustrating that. So I have my bid, bid modifier. If I associate it at the campaign level, um, you know, line item one beneath campaign does not have a bid modifier of its own, so it will inherit the campaign level bid modifier. But line item two has its own bid modifier, and therefore line item two's bid modifier will override the campaign level. So this is really a, um, a feature for convenience. You may actually uh, learn um, that, that you know, certain, certain attributes like exchanges or certain uh, custom lists like app domains, you always want to um, change your bid prices on. So instead of having to apply those uh, one at a time to every line item, for those sort of universal things, you can just apply it to the campaign level and then all line items will inherit it. Um, and so, cause we, we think this feature can be used in that sort of, you know, more generic way where you have some certain truths where you want to apply them across all your buys. Um, but then on a specific line item, you may want to do uh, custom more specific things. Multiple matching terms. So we talked about this earlier, but just to illustrate this. So um, when there are multiple matching terms across different keys. So, you know, key being operating system is one key and state is a different key. Um, so if there are multiple matching terms, they get multiplied together. So I have a bid modifier on OS and state. On auctions where both are true, when, I, when OS is iOS and state is New York, um, those modifiers of two and two will be multiplied together to uh, 4X your bid, right? So this is what happens when there's multiple uh, matching terms across keys. There are some uh, keys where you can have um, multiple values within the same key. So one example is category. And so when this happens, uh, if there are multiple matching terms, we take the highest. So ID category being an example. A single page can be both marked as a careers page and an education page, so that can happen you may have a modifier on both of those. But instead of multiplying those two together, we'll take a max. So in this case, we'll take the max as five, we'll five X the bid, right? This can also happen for segments, right? So you can have a single auction where multiple segments match. Um, so if there are multiple segments that match, we'll take the max. So we don't want, uh, you know, this is sort of a judgment call and, uh, and we think it's the right thing. We, you don't want to um, necessarily multiply things together within the same key, so we take the max, um, the max instead. Uh, let me talk about how you can use sort of which bidding strategies you can use bid modifiers with. So in our, so Hexbid um, has four standard bidding, bidding strategies. So for everything other than CPC, so for flat CPM bidding, flat CPM with pacing, optimized CPM, for those three, uh, you can use bid modifiers. If you choose CPC, you cannot use bid modifiers. So we made that decision that we, we want, in, in our case right now, to only have our hex bid optimization changing the bid price. Uh, and so that's a product decision. And so if you select CPC, you won't see the bid modifier tab. But you may wonder, like, what about custom bidding strategies? So if you have your own bidding agent, you optionally can uh, use uh, the bid modifiers with your bidding agent. So you would actually have to ask us to enable that. So this is a custom feature where you'd have to have your account manager enable it. But if you did enable it, what would happen is um, you would see the bid modifier tab when you selected your custom strategy. And to your bidding agent um, in that proto, we will send the final um, we call it the bid modifier multipliers product, but it's the final product so um, that you, sh you could use to modify your bid prices. So in the example I gave earlier, when there were two modifying terms that matched um, and the, the end factor was four, we would just simply send four to your bidding agent. And then it's up to you to decide if you want to use that uh, in any way in your bidding agent, right? Um, so we think this is an interesting feature. We think if you want to have, for example, um, your traders be able to 
influence your algorithm, uh, give it hints or, or override certain things. Uh, you may want to enable this feature and enable your, your, your traders uh, to be able to send that data to your bidding agent uh, for your bidding agent to use. A uh, couple more slides and then we'll, we'll take uh, questions. So bid modifiers and reporting. So we'll include um, them in both uh, our logs and aggregated reporting. So for raw bid and win logs, so those two sets of logs, we're including two new fields. There's the bid modifier ID. So the bid modifier ID, it's the object in Buzz that houses all the bid modifier terms, right? So um, in my demo, I, I called it bid modifier number three. It had all those terms. Um, so that, that whole bid modifier has an ID and that ID will be available in logs. We will also put in logs the final product. So uh, similar to sending the final product to your bidding agent, that final product will be available in the bid and win logs. And then in aggregated reporting, so in Buzz, in our performance report, and our bid performance report, there are two new fields, the bid modifier ID um, and the bid modifier name uh, that was on that object, right? So on that campaign or advertiser line item, uh, what bid modifier was used um, to ultimately get the, the final bid price. Uh, Near-term roadmap, so this is, this is immediate stuff. We have actually a, quite a long roadmap around bid modifiers. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of exciting things with it, but in the near term, there are a couple of things. So we've already talked about this, but customless items that's coming in a couple of weeks, we'll announce that very soon. And secondly, uh, sort of the ability to bulk upload bid modifiers. So instead of going through the UI and adding one at a time, you may just wanna have a spreadsheet, you know, Excel file, CSV, uh, articulate your bid modifiers, upload them, uh, and then uh, have them apply, which should be really powerful as you, you know, pull, pull reporting, um, analyze that data, then uh, apply bid modifiers in, that, in a similar spreadsheet and upload them. And lastly, for activation, the feature is open uh, for you. So simply let your account team know uh, and we will enable it. It'll take like 24 hours for us to enable it. Uh, and of course, it goes without saying, but I did want to just mention there is no additional fee uh, for using bid modifiers. So with that, um, if there are questions, we could, we could take any questions. You should also feel free to email me directly uh, at shamimabeeswax.com if you have any additional follow-ups. Thanks, Shamim. So one question that came in is, I'm currently building a bid modifier uh, or a custom uh, algorithm on the back end. And um, I wanted to potentially optimize using bid modifier now. Um, does, do the learnings from my bid modifier get passed through um, to affect any change in my custom algorithm? Yeah, so that's a good question. So if you're building a, a custom bidding agent now, um, the, well, the fir first thing I would say is you could it's, it's not an, uh, a one or the other. So you could, you could use um, bid modifiers on some line items and have your custom bidding agent be used on other line items. Um, and secondly, you can use both in conjunction. So, uh, you know, in the example I gave before, just going to that slide, you can, um, the second option, so you're, your, uh, your bid, bidding agent can receive instructions via um, bid modifier, right? And so uh, in that sense, those, those learnings or those things that you want to apply to your bidding agent uh, can be passed through uh, using bid modifiers. Uh, we have a, another question from Nori Yugi. I'm a bit confused regarding the fourth way of applying bid modifier, which is coming in the next few weeks. Are you saying we can't use bid modifier on app bundle lists just yet? That's a very good question. So you can use it on the list. So let me just go. So what you can do today, immediately effective today, is you can apply the bid modifier on an entire list, right? So for this, this high value mobile app list, may have just 100 mobile apps in it, 
right? So for that entire list of apps, you can apply a bid modifier. In this case, I've applied a bid modifier of two. The feature, the fourth way that's coming in a couple of weeks is um, on the custom list item level. So within that, that for, you know, for those 100 apps, if you wanted to specify a different modifier for each or for some of those 100 apps, um, that's what you'll be able to do in a couple of weeks. So uh, essentially the, what's gonna change is when you upload a list, instead of just giving us the, the, you know, the list ID and the list item that you wanna put um, the, the, the item into, you'll also be able to say, hey, when I give you this, this mobile app or this list item, uh, I'm also gonna give you the bid modifier for that individual item, right? Uh, and then what'll happen is it, it'll work similar to the way um, segments work, where you'll have, you have that sort of dynamic button. Uh, you'll be able to do the same thing with custom lists. So you'll be able to say, just imagine this was actually a custom list. You'd say, hey, use the dynamic value. So the value that comes in um, from my upload, and if there is, if, if there is no uh, bid modifier for my upload, use the default um, that I specified here. So hopefully that clarifies it. And it looks, and yes, that clarifies it, thank you. <laughs> um, so it looks like that's it for questions. Again, if you have additional questions that you wanna ask offline, feel free to email Shamim at Shamim, S-H-A-M-I-M at beeswax.com. Um, also feel free to reach out to your account manager to enable this feature or function now that you've been um, loosely trained on it. They'll provide additional training for you and be, be able to enable that. Oh, we do have one more question um, from Johnny Lowe. In the example you mentioned bidding higher from New York City, if you want to exclude New York, can that be done as well? Yeah, it can. So there's two ways of, uh, so excluding New York, uh, we kind of believe you should do that in targeting, so you can exclude um, New York in targeting, but there's, there's actually this um, ability to, uh, if you set a bid modifier of zero, um, sorry, realize. Uh, so if you set a bid modifier of zero, that will effectively do the same thing um, as targeting away from it, right? Um, which could be really powerful because you may, uh, you know, you, you could do the same thing in, in targeting, but given the flexible way that you can apply bid modifiers at the campaign level, um, we think it's actually a cool, uh, a cool sort of uh, additional way of, of exclude, excluding certain dimensions. Awesome. Uh, thanks for joining everyone. We will be sending out a recorded version of this webinar within 24 hours. Again, feel free to reach out to your account manager should you have additional questions or want this feature enabled within your UI um, or API for that matter. Um, and um, we will follow up with you soon on additional features and upgrades to this product. Thank you.